Roll it up. One other crazy thing I remember happening, uh, because I did work out a lot and I was in shape and everything, and, and uh, uh, I don't know, they called him like the head of the white guys. It was this little tiny punk kid, right? And he was gonna beat up this guy that was like 6'5", right? So he wanted me to do it. He's like, oh, you gotta do it for me. I'm like, I ain't rolling with you, man. I said, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna do it. I said, I'll do it. I said, I'll go kick that guy's ass. I have no reason to kick that guy's ass, but when I'm done, I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna kick your ass. And he didn't like that one bit, boy. You know, I said, cause I, by then I'm gonna be pissed and I will fuck you up and you don't even think I don't give a shit who you are or who you think you're running. If you want me to do that for you, then be prepared, right? Cause I'm coming after you and there ain't none of you fucking Packer boys around here gonna fuck me up, right? And they. They didn't know what to think. You know, I mean, Ed, I wrestled in college. I, I cage fought with, and was trained by Dan Severn, who was um, the beast right when cage fighting was, you know, started. So I figured I could hold my own, you know, and I was working out just like I was training, and you know, nobody really wanted to fuck with me. The reality of it is I just, uh, I was a big meth head. I liked a lot of meth and I liked to be awake. I didn't, you know, I didn't have a hustle. I had a job and it's pretty hard to keep a job when you're all tweaked out. Um, but nevertheless, I was married to a lady that um, apparently she met somebody else while I was out working. And I was working on the road in Seattle. I came home, my son's like, hey, how come you don't pack your cigarettes like uh, Jason? And I figured out she was cheating on me. So I quit my job, hung around the house until all the money and the savings ran out. I was a pretty angry person, right? And um, I had a couple cases prior to this of uh, domestic violence. And um, this might sound total bullshit, but it, it's the truth. <laughs> I stepped on my, my ex-wife's little toe. And it was... We, we, it was a bad fight, you know, I knew she was cheating on me and everything, but I, uh, she hit me with a bat and I wasn't going to let her hit me again and I had my boots on and I stepped on her toe and broke her toe. I knew that our relationship was pretty well over and uh, I had gotten a new job and, and I told her, I said, hey baby, put your black dress on because uh, I'm going to take you out. I got a fat check coming and um, I never showed up. <laughs> I stayed away for like four days, went and got a couple of hookers. Yeah, it was fun, had a nice time. So when I decided to go home and get uh, get my clothes, she was hot. She was fit to be tied. She was pretty aggressive and, you know, like I said, she hit me with a bat and, and just, it was, it was nuts, you know, and, and I was just trying to stay away from her, man, it, you know, the whole it was like out of a movie, you know, the whole thing where she's on the t uh, table and I'm flipping the table away to run in the bedroom and get my clothes. And I'm, we had this huge dresser and I moved it in front of the door and she's pushing the dresser away, trying to get in. And you fucking, you know, she's going off. It was crazy. And then she's, you broke my toe. And I'm like, well, I, she goes, I got to go to the hospital. Fuck you. I ain't, I ain't taking the hospital. I should go to be with, because being with you, I'm, I think I'm crazy, you know, and, and just, the whole gamut, and it was really rough and really ugly. And of course, you know, I had like paraphernalia in my pockets, right? And I went to bed, she went to the hospital, I went to bed, and then I'm laying in bed and I hear, you know, all these fucking people around. I'm like, what the fuck? And the cops, man, they swarmed the house, right? Cause she had went to, yeah, it was pretty rough, you know? It was pretty rough, they, uh, they, um, you know, 
was I going to do? You know, it just just kind of sucked. You know, all the cops, and then they're digging in my pockets, and yeah, no, that ain't mine. You know, and and um, we, her and I, kind of tried to make it work. Didn't really work too well. You know, and she stayed with the with dude and, and that she was with, and good for her. You know, I remember leaving the house with the cuffs and my arms locked up and looking around and just being like, what the fuck? And uh, looking around the house and going, oh man, this just looks way like, you know, way. And don't get me wrong, man. I was, I was, I'm not a saint, you know? I never doubled up my fist and hit her, right? But I, I did, I put my hands on her and, and it was ugly. So they got me for aggravated assault with disfigurement. And, um, you know, I started to, like, at the beginning of the whole court process, I started to fight it. You know, like, I was going to fight it. I was going to get work furlough and all this other shit. But the reality, my reality, was I was a hot mess. I was totally strung out on math. And I just thought to myself, at the rate I was going, I wasn't going to make it. So um, what I ended up doing was just after they, they had actually... I went through the whole court process. They said I could have six months of work furlough, then three years of probation. And when I really sat down and thought about it, I'm like, this just, I ain't gonna make it. Uh, what I ended up doing is I went in and I told my lawyer, or my public pretender is what I like to call him. I told him, I said, hey, look, dude, I just, just sent me to prison. And um, he, He's like, no, I already got this for you. And I'm like, I don't want it. And and I'm sitting in Sheriff Joe Arpaio's tent city. I don't know if y'all heard about it, but it's a, it's nasty. I'm wearing pink underwear and stripes and, and it, it's just terrible. And I'm like, fuck this, just send me to prison. I'm done. I, I'm not gonna do this anymore with you guys. And uh, I finally told him, I said, you're my public defender. He said, yes. I said, so essentially you're my lawyer. He said, yes. I said, so. The state's paying you, right? He said, yes. I said, so why don't we just act like I'm paying you and this is what I want. Just send me to prison. And he got bent, he got seriously bent. And um, during the whole sentencing process, uh, I knew I was going in. I knew that's what I was gonna do. I had talked to my ex-wife who said, let me write my kids. And uh, she said, okay. So while I was in, in uh, jail, waiting to get, go through all this, I started writing letters. She came into court, told them that I was harassing her by sending letters to her, and that I was breaking the restraining order. And I spun around in court and called her a fucking cunt. And that went over really well. And so instead of getting one year, I got 18 months. And uh, yeah, it was pretty jacked up, you know. But at that point, then they sent me to a different pod, and I was like on my way out. And a couple weeks later, I ended up um, in Florence, Arizona. And uh, I was scared to death. I, I, I didn't know what to think. I mean, I'd been in jail for, you know, just stupid shit, you know, marijuana, you know, whatever. Just nothing really, you know. So, uh, but this was this was kind of real at that time. I'm like, now nah, what am I gonna do? And I figured when I went in, if the reason why I decided to go in was because I was strung out, then I'm gonna make the best of it and look for every opportunity I can to better myself. So I didn't get caught up in all the, the race shit. I didn't get caught up in, in uh, you know, cause they want, you know, I just worked out. I just figured if I could just like have this like wall around me and work out and people are gonna leave me alone and they did. So after I moved and I'd moved from one yard to another yard and then met up with a, I had a friend of mine that I'd met a long time ago and he was part of Skinheads and he kind of embraced me because I worked out and he wanted to work out and stuff like that. I didn't, wasn't part of his little prison gang type thing, but they just kind of, you know, they're like, yeah, that guy's cool, leave him alone. And it just made my stay a lot, like, calmer. Right off the bat, they put you to work. And I was um, welding up the, the doors in the, in the max section. And what I was doing was making it, I was encaging the guys more than what they already were. And that just didn't sit right with me. And I, I talked to the the, um, the officer and told him, I said, this just ain't working for me. I said, I don't feel right about it. Uh, these guys ain't animals, you know, whatever they did, it ain't none of my business. But um, 
And he said, if you do this for two weeks, man, I'll make sure that the rest of your stay you can get any job you want. Okay. And he did. And I was starving to death, dude, being a tweak head and not having no fucking food, right, or not eating, right. Now I'm starting to work out, and I want to put weight back on and, and jail weight and shit. And uh, so he got me a job in a sandwich shop, and I cut meat, right. So I had all the, I could fucking eat all day. And then, um, and then after that, I got a job in the kitchen, right. And, I mean, there was all kinds of crazy, stupid political crap going down all the time, you know. The guys are thinking they're running this and they're running that. And I just really just tried to stay away from it as much as I could. But that fear of getting out, of like, can I do it? You know, as the best years already, you know, because I, I, this was my second wife. I've already paid child support, got kids. You know, am I going to be able to, to start all over and, and, and stay out of trouble? You know, am I going to be able to, like, stay the fuck away from the dope? You know, am I going to be able to not be angry because I don't get my way? You know, am I, am I going to be able to articulate myself well enough without letting my anger come out and, and look like a prick? You know, and get myself in more trouble. So before I went in, I took a, uh, all my tools, you know, to a buddy of mine. I told him, I said, hey, look, I know I'm going in. I know I probably could get a job with you right now. I said, but I'm going to go do my time and just be done with it. You know? And because it was a violent crime, or they considered it a violent crime, I didn't get really any parole. I do pretty much all of my time there. And so when I got out, I only seen the parole officer once. And... Uh, the day that I got out, I went, got my driver's license, you know, got a, another picture, and then went and picked up my tools, and then went and talked to that guy, and I had a job the very next day. Like, I found a place to live at some, I had to have a co-ed halfway house, because I was just tired of all the swinging dicks, and uh, there was, find a co-ed house, at least I could find some chick to bang, and I did. I'm a recovering addict. You know, I, uh, I, I'd like to say that I never did dope again after that, but I did, you know. Um, and I know that right as soon as I got out, the day I got out of prison, man, I met up with a couple guys that were in there because everybody talks, oh, yeah, we're going to do this and we're going to do this. And I think we did a lot. And I was in this halfway house, and I'm all fucking tweaking and trying to, like, hide in my bed and, and thinking that, uh, oh, nobody's going to know. And, you know, but because I had paid and they just kind of like looked the other way and figured, you know, he's just out and, and everything. And then I went to work, right, and uh, started working. I'm a lineman. And so it was really easy for me to find a job. And, uh, and I stayed with that company for quite some time. I know that the hardest thing for myself when I was in there was thinking, can I make it? Am I going to get portrayed as this felon am I gonna be able to get the doors open for me again right because I am a felon and then something had clicked in my head and what I realized was what were they gonna say about me that I already didn't know so if I just said it about myself they can all kiss my ass so I figured if that's all public knowledge then I'm just gonna hurt myself if I lie about it right and so uh, the big break I got was getting the job before I went in. And the other break I got was my parole officer, her husband was a lineman. But just being honest about my shit, you know, I worked for the city of Los Angeles. I was working at Bakersfield, doing the same thing, you know, building power lines. And I applied for the city of Los Angeles. I got the phone number and I called this guy. And right off the bat, the very first thing I told him was, was, I'm not gonna waste your time and I don't wanna waste mine. I'm a felon, and if being a felon is going to keep me from getting this job, then let's just, you know, it's nice talking to you. And his reply was, no, that's not going to keep you from getting a job. And they denied me the first, the first go around because they had asked me when I, he said, just don't be dishonest about applying when you apply for the job, about everything. So I called every place I'd ever been that I've ever got in trouble and I got all the court paperwork. So here I got this huge file of paper 
and I handed in with my application, and they looked at it and said, no. They denied me right off the bat, and I appealed it. So I, I got letters from like the Catholic priest, friends of mine, stuff like that, saying that, hey, I'm, I've changed. And in that whole appeal process for the city of Los Angeles, I got a job there, you know? And um, yeah, I, I, my life, it's totally different, totally different. Um, you know, I'm not loaded. I got a beautiful wife. We go to meetings together. She's also in the program. And I, I got a pretty stable gig, you know. I don't have to worry about getting fired. And if I don't feel like going to work one day, I don't have to. And um, I'm it's just, I'm really fortunate. I've really been blessed. And, you know, and, and um, it's way more than I ever could imagine. If there's anything I can say to anybody getting out, don't hide it, right? And try to do the best to figure out what your main malfunction is, right? And the one thing I know for a fact is most people in this world are self-absorbed people. They don't really care whether you're a felon or not. If you're a good person, you're a good person. If you're a prick, you're a prick. If you're out doing felonious acts, the reality of it is you're probably gonna get caught and end up back in prison, right? But if you have that stigma, oh my gosh, I'm a felon, you're gonna carry that. You're projecting that onto them, right? But if you just say, hey, you know, that was just a, I looked at it, I had a vacation. I had an 18 month vacation from my life to see if I could make my life just a tiny bit better. That's it, you know? So if you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm a felon, don't think of yourself that way. You did something stupid, you got caught up, you know, maybe you're a thief. Being a thief, you gotta have two parts down. You gotta be a thief and the getting away part. If you got that getting away part not down, if it ain't working for you, you're gonna get caught, you know? So, I don't know, and if you're stuck on the dope, find a way to quit. That's the way I look at it. You know, because if I can do it, you know, and when I say I was a hope to die doping, I stuck a needle in my arm every single day for 17 years. You know, and that was crazy. I don't do that no more. You know, I don't even think about that no more. And I work on the, the craziest power system in the whole United States, and they let me do it. And I get to work with high voltage elect electricity. It's awesome, you know? And I get respect from the guys that I work with. Nobody looks at me like I'm a felon. Nobody really cares. So, I don't know, that's, what, that's one thing I, I can say, man. Just don't think of yourself that way. Because when you think of yourself that way, you're going to project that out to people. You know, just think of yourself as a good person. You'll be a good person. Matt Bailey, fresh out, life after the penitentiary.